Hello everyone, let me welcome you to my third video for the class 11th and CRT and we had started with uh, the living world chapter so in the previous classes we have seen what is living now in the living process we have seen that we have various characters which we need to discuss the various characters like your growth, reproduction, metabolism these three characters have been discussed by us in the previous classes now let's discuss about the very important one consciousness now consciousness basically means the ability to sense environment I can sense the environment if the environment is hot right a non-living thing cannot sense the environment but there lies a very complicated uh, technical issues in it how if we are heating or if we are boiling the egg the egg become solidified because of the folding of the proteins now that is reacting to the environment the environment is having the heat similarly we if the heat is present in our environment we will try to wear the cotton clothes so <coughs> that gives a question mark on this particular stuff now as i said consciousness means what it is the ability to sense environment how beautifully an organism can sense an environment is a very important thing which we'll be studying in the higher classes now as i told you guys it is technically a complicated feature it is very complicated feature right then uh, all organisms now a very important thing comes over here all organism on our earth are totally aware of environment but there is one whom we call the humans are the only organism which is aware of himself right so that's why we call human beings as the self-conscious organisms they have the capacity by which they they can uh, they are aware of themselves and the environment around them now there is a question now there's a a uh, full point which I would like to discuss over here about the coma patients now the coma patients uh, you might have heard in the movies regarding them they basically <coughs> they basically play a vital role in understanding the difference between the conscious and non-conscious now in the in the coma patient what happens they are not able to sense the environment are they dead according to me they are not dead the other body parts are still working Right? So, coma patients are supported by machines replacing the heart and the lungs. Their heart and the lung is basically replaced by the artificial machines and there is no self-consciousness in the coma patient. They don't know what is happening around them. Uh, some of the people say that they, there is something they know, they, their ears are still working. Right? But some of the like uh, biologists say that the coma patients are basically under a long sleep in which the brain becomes partially inactive right now some of the scientists say that in this the brain become dead right according to me it is a big question mark but then also in the lot of books you will be finding that the brain is dead in the coma patients now no self-consciousness the senses are lost send signal to the heart now very important thing the brain is approximately dead but it sends the signal to the heart if it is sending the signal to the heart that means it is partially living in nature right but it is not sending signal to other parts right now this brain dead situation is pretty different from the word paralysis i feel i don't need to discuss the word paralysis now now let's move on to the next stuff in the ability to sense environment or in the consciousness we have response to the stimuli a living organism will of course lead to a response in the stimuli but you can uh, like make a question or contradict the situations by uh, keeping in the mind keeping in the mind that you are having a sponge you are pressing the sponge it will remove out the air but when we uh, remove the pressing power from it it attains its size that means it is responding to the stimuli similarly humans also respond and the organisms also respond to the stimuli the stimuli can be physical physical uh, if I give you an example of temperature 
will be considered as a physical, biological. I will be considered as biological if uh, I'm slapping you guys. Then chemical means if uh, the bacteria, if certain bacteria are moving towards a certain chemical species, right? So that is the response to the chemical species, right? Now, if we move to the next stuff, the ability to sense environment is totally by the sense organs, right? And in the plants, they are responding by responding to light. They are responding to the water, the light. In the light, we basically have the upper portion, shoot portion, in which what happens? The shoot move towards the sunlight. In water, we are basically having the root which moves downwards, right? Then we have the temperature also, we have the organisms also, we have the pollutants also. So the plants also respond to these factors, right? And that's why they are considered as the conscious. Now, <clears throat> let's move on to the next part of it. The next part is the very uh, important stuff. The living phenomena are due to underlying interactions. Keep in the mind, I am discussing the two very important interactions, the property of tissues and the properties of cellular organelles. These are very very important to understand the nat <coughs> nature of biology. So, let us discuss with the property of tissue. Now, this property of tissue is not present in the cell. A individual cell does not have the property of tissue but this property arises due to the interaction of different cells if the group of cells are interacting with each other this will lead to the formation of a property of tissue which is not individually present in the cells right so that's why it is called as property of tissue not present in the cells arises due to the interaction of cells and it is made up of group of cells only. Tissues are only made up of your group of cells. Now, <clears throat> let's move on to the next property. The property of cellular organelles. Organelles, you know, there are so many organelles present in the cells. So, this is not present in molecular constituents. To define something as living and non-living, you will say that Atom is present in our body also, atom is present in non-living thing also. Why the non-living thing is not uh, living and why we are living? The question is being answered in these two process, these two uh, interactions or the phenomena. Not living in molecular constraints. Now arises due to the interaction, interaction of molecules. We know that all living organisms are made up of molecules and these molecules are interacting with each other and they are creating a certain structures which we call as the cellular organelles and these cellular organelles plays an important role in determining whether something is living or non-living right so these are the two very important uh, properties or the phenomena properties of cellular organ organelles this arises due to the interactions between or of the molecules and the cellular organelles, we already knew that they are made up of molecules. Now, <clears throat> let me discuss the last point of our today's, the living organisms. Now, you know, we know that the living organisms can replicate by self. They can evolve. You know that humans also have been evolved from different ancestors. They can self-regulate. They can regulate by themselves the situation around them. Right? And these interactive systems, this interactive system capable of respond to the stimuli. These systems make it capable for the uh, response to the stimuli. We are basically discussing about the consciousness and in the consciousness there is always a very important factor of the stimuli and stimuli is being caused by this particular processes. Stimuli is a very technical term which can be of the short meaning and a long meaning also. Self-replicating, evolving, self-regulatory interactions. This basically leads to the formation of an interactive system and this interactive system is capable of responding to the stimuli. 
and in this how basically our organism responds to the stimuli. So let me recall back the things once again quickly. Uh, consciousness is the ability to sense environment. Technically, it is a complicated feature, and it is basically done by the sense organs. In the plants, it is towards the lights, water, temperature, certain organisms, and pollutants. Response to the stimuli can be could be to the physical. Or it can be biological or it can be chemical and all organisms are aware of their environment humans are basically aware of themselves so you might have uh, we have discussed the case of the coma patient in which we call there is a situation of uh, dead brain and in this we basically have this transfer of signals from the brain to the heart so that the blood supply can be there to the other tissues then <coughs> we have seen that the brain dead situation is pretty different from the paralysis situation then we have seen that there are two phenomena uh, which are uh, underlining this principle the two very important phenomena for explaining the consciousness are the property of tissues and the properties of cellular organelles now in the properties of tissues we have seen that it is arising due to the interaction of cells and you know we know that the cells are combining together to form the tissues and this property of tissue is not present in the cells. But if you talk about, talk about the properties of cellular, organ, or, uh, cellular organelles, this is, present in, uh, this is due, present due to the interaction between the molecules. And you know that the molecules together lead to the formation of different kind of organelles. And it is not due to the presence or the interactions only of the molecular constitutions. Now, uh, let's move on to the living organisms. The living organisms are self-replicating. Self-replicating in the sense means they are doing the process of reproduction. They are evolving. There is a gradual change from a long period of time that is uh, evolving and self-regulating. They can regulate their uh, environment and their internal, inter internal environment and the external environment. Now this leads to the formation of an interactive system and that makes them capable to respond to the environment response to the stimuli in the environment. So with this, uh, we will be discussing in the next class such and other, other topics which will be for preceding uh, this, uh, which will be, sorry, which will be succeeding this uh, stuff in the 11th class NCRT. Thank you for listening to me. Have a good day. Bye-bye.